Hello everyone, it's Tana. Welcome back to my channel and another video for the Rabbit Hole Designs. Today we're working with the Book Lover stamp set. We're going to make some bookmarks and a really cool card. I really love the way the card turned out. So first I took a tag die I had from my stash to make a smaller size bookmark. And I'm taking the sentiments, most of the sentiments in the stamp set, and trying to fit them where they may, just repeat them over and over as a background for the bookmark. Really simple. Just wanted the stamped and heat embossed sentiments and then some ink blending. And some of them are repeated, but that's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You'll see me here trying to fit and see what works best where and seeing how I can make it look its best. I do have to say if there's one thing I could change, it would be putting book drivert next to each other twice. But, you know, hey, you live and you learn, right? <laughs> Much better than my what the fork incidents in the last video, if anybody saw the last video. So we're just going to finish up heat embossing these last sentiments here. And there's that all said and done. Sorry for the door slam. The kids are supposed to be sleeping. I'm having a little bit of a trouble with that. For the second bookmark, I wanted it taller and thinner, more like an original bookmark. So I'm just going to trim this down here. I don't remember what size it is. I will put that on the screen for you guys before I publish this video. And then I kind of traced the other tag bookmark just to make sure I had the slanted sides and then put a punch, a hole punch, where the hole for the thread will be. And then we're going to do some more ink blending. Well, some ink blending. We didn't finish the ink blending yet. My mind's ahead of my, my mouth, it seems, or my mouth is ahead of my mind. Or my actions. I don't know what I'm saying, guys. <laughs> I'm doing two voices overs in a row here. So I went with Fill in This Potion, Kitsch Flamingo, and Salvaged Patina, and it's just Distress Ink, not Oxide. And I did not blend them together. I put clear lines in between each color with my uh, purple tape and that's the way I wanted it. I didn't want to blend it together this time around and that's okay. I like the look. I think it gives it distinction because it's a fairly simple bookmark. It has just the heat embossed sentiments and then the ink blending. So I just kind of wanted it to have some defined lines and that's how we're going to have it look aside from the thread. And now we're moving on to the second bookmark and a little bit more, now I can say it, a little bit more ink blending. And we have the Uncharted Mariner Distress Ink. I think this is the first time I've actually gotten to use this color and I really like it, really like it. Now I did not show you all the ink blending, but I got that fairly saturated. I wanted it nice and dark, which I came to regret later. Now I still like the color, but it was very difficult to continuously stamp out these books without the animals. I only wanted the books. So first I just tried wiping the stamp off before I stamped and then said to heck with this, covered up the two animals with purple tape and just wiped the tail off a little bit. And I ended up needing to stamp it like four or five times each even though I don't show you. And I did that twice. I did one coming from the left side of the bookmark and then right underneath it coming from the right side of the bookmark and then down towards the bottom we're going to put our sentiment and then our colored image, which I believe I showed you at the beginning, my image that I had already colored in with my Copics. And I cannot remember which sentiment I went for. It's your story, uh, write well, edit often. And now we're going to adhere our image here with some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. I do unfortunately have to trim a little bit of the tail off the edge in that, but that's okay. Or you can leave it, but I decided to trim it off. And now we're going to go with our thread. So I tried to pick thread that would match each bookmark. I went with a dark blue and kind of a peachy color for the longer, thinner bookmark because the rabbit's holding a peachy colored book. And then for the other one, I went with the, tried to match up the colors of the ink blending. I did two cut two pieces of each color, not doing anything fancy. I thought about making tassels because I can do it, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. I don't have a very easy time with it. So I just decided to do a simple 
fold in half, swoop through the hole, pull through, and that's it, as you will see in a second. And I actually had a little bit of a hard time with the first one because I had cut the thread so short, and I cut some of it out, but I was having a really hard time trying to get all the pieces through the loops. But I finally got it, and then I trimmed them short, wanted it nice and short, and then for the second one we left it longer. But there's not as much thread either, so I didn't have as much of a problem pulling those through. Trim those even, and that's it for the bookmarks. Thought they turned out pretty cute. Now for my favorite part of the video. So I took those books and I stamped them over and over and over and over again. And then I took these stamp sets here, an old Halloween set, a couple old Halloween sets, the lamp from the Clarence, the drooling Clarence for Christmas from the latest release. And then I took the vase from the Mother's Day set, I believe from last year, and a shell from Flower Whale. I'll have all these listed below for you guys. And I wanted other stuff besides books. Okay, so we're going for a wall. I tried to use pattern paper for this, just didn't look right. So I went with a very pale color. I decided to use milled lavender distress oxide. Ink blended my panel. And now we're gonna pull in some old Tim Holtz ideology, I believe, Christmas pattern paper. Uh, it's Christmassy on the back at least. I ended up measuring out like quarter inch pieces and trimmed it because it's wood planks on the other side and I wanted it to look like wooden bookshelves. So now that we have those all trimmed out and that's why I wanted other stuff, I wanted it to look nice like a whole wall of somebody's books, their, their comfy spot, their reading spot, but with decorations as well, you know? So that's what I like most about this card is just the eclectic distinction of somebody's wall of books, I guess you could say. So I measured out where I wanted that first shelf to go, and then I went from there. I basically put some books down in a vase and whatnot just to see where the height of the next bookshelf would go. Once I got all the measurements out, I laid down my, excuse me, my bookshelves with adhesive, uh, some Nouveau Deluxe adhesive, got all the bookshelves laid out, and then started to design. I think that's the best part of this card was deciding where I wanted things to go and how I wanted to lay the books. Some of the books I left together. A lot of the books I fussy cut individually and then had to go around each and every single one with a black marker to finish it off. But I'm glad because I really do love the way this card turned out. It's one of my favorites from this year. And then I took some, like some of the little potion bottles from the Halloween sets and the cat from the Halloween set. And like I said, the shells. I did color some crystals as well, thinking I could turn them into candles or something, but I didn't end up using those. And then I started like stacking books one on top of the other instead of having them straight upright, up and down. Some of them are leaning against books that are standing straight up and down. And I mean, obviously you guys can see what I'm doing right here, but I thought I would show you the process and how I went about it. I just started by working one shelf, designing that shelf, and then continuing to build up from there. Sometimes it was just the books I laid down and then decided where I wanted other stuff to go later. I did uh, use a flower from that You Scripty Word stamp set to put in the vase instead of the flower that was originally in it because I knew the flower that was already in it was going to be way too tall for the bookshelf. and it's just a matter of placing the pieces where you want them. I really love the coffee mug and the cat. I think those are my favorites. I do like the potion bottles as well because they could be perfume bottles, just decorative bottles, you know, whatever you want them to be. Or, you know, you know, it's Halloween time. This could be a witch's cauldron or a witch's hidey hole, and those could be all spell books with her potion bottles, you know, with a black cat. So that's how it ended up looking in the end. And then we have our sentiment for the inside. I do not, as usual, remember what I picked. To make a long story short, I miss you. That's what I chose. And I used cream colored paper for the inside cardstock instead of white, which is my usual go-to color. Then I adhered my front panel to a black card base. And after that was all set, I used, you see my invite 
I made baby shower invites for my cousin. And I accidentally had extras, so I just used the back for the insert of, for my card. Why waste it, you know? Put that in the inside with some double-sided adhesive. I'm sorry, I go off on tangents, I know. And then use some glossy accents on the potion bottles, the seashell, uh, the mug. I think that was it. Yeah, maybe the vase. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys liked today's video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you like what you saw today and you want to see more. Don't forget to sign up for the Rabbit Hole Designs email to be aware of the new releases. And don't forget to look for us on Instagram and the Facebook group so you can see inspiration for new releases all month long every month. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now, guys.